I wanted to give you guys another update. Uh, we've sussed out some things, but we're getting good, good bubblage. I'm feeling some warmth. Uh, it's not hot by any means, but it's nice and warm over here by the heel. Got some good pressure on it, and I, the trick with this is do not force it. Welcome to Jiff Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera it's Matt. As always. Can you say always now, by the way? Like, uh, I'm not always behind the camera <laughs> That's anymore. That's true, yeah. Right? It's yeah. mostly behind the camera. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but we have something exciting today. It's something a little bit different. Uh, it is an acoustic guitar, but it's not a driftwood acoustic guitar. What we have is a December of 1941 uh, Martin 015 that somebody who watches our channel reached out to me uh, and said, Hey, I've got this guitar. It really needs some work done to it. I really doubt that you'll say yes. But uh, we do it. And um, it's been a very, very long time since I've had a pre-war Martin come to the shop. Uh, we figured we'd make some video content for you guys, uh, teach them out a little bit about how to do neck resets, and uh, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so we're excited to show you guys what's going on with it. So, um, just a basic rundown of this guitar. Uh, like I said, um, 1941, 015, uh, so it's technically a pre-war, as Matt points out, it's technically a pre-war uh, of American involvement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just right, probably right around the time Pearl Harbor happened, um, which is always just really cool to have an instrument like that, that old that's seen that much stuff in your hands. From my uh, my observations of this guitar, it is not 100% original. It does look like it has an overspray on it. Uh, well done. And the overspray looks like it was done quite a long time ago, so it is patinaed nicely. Um, but customer complains. I don't know if you've seen this. Have you seen that YouTube channel? No. It's like it's a. There's a YouTube channels that are just like auto mechanics and they're called customer states. <laughs> oh. <laughs> customer states on this guitar, uh, that it needs a neck reset as well as um, a new bridge. Um, but what I want to do is show you guys a little bit of uh, what uh, are the symptoms of a guitar needing a net reset and how you can check and make sure uh, that it needs it. First of all, the main thing is that you're gonna have the action super stinking high on the guitar and no matter what you do over here at the saddle, the action is really high. So what you do is you put straight edge on the neck any straight edge will do. And what you want is your straight edge on top of the frets to just kiss the top of the bridge. If it needs a neck reset, that's what you're gonna see. I don't know if Matt's getting that really good, but uh, you can see um, where it's intersecting is about the middle of the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of makes it pretty clear that no matter how much I were to lower the saddle on this guitar, um, the action would still be very, very high. So the only solution is to pull the neck off kick the neck angle back a little bit and then glue it back on. I'm gonna be a little transparency for you guys. Matt and I actually started shooting this video about two weeks ago and we were showing the old fashioned way, which is pulling off the fret here at the body joint and then drilling a couple holes and then taking an old cappuccino machine, firing it up and then jamming a whole bunch of steam down inside the neck. That's how I've always done neck resets. It's the way that I was taught. It's it's just the way that it's been done forever. <laughs> Venti, uh, extra hot, exactly. extra foam, extra foam, <laughs> shot of vanilla. Exactly. Um, so uh, what happened? What happened was we. <laughs> it was a Friday. We shot the very first part of the guitar repair. Um, but then Friday night, I got to looking at um, Twidford, another awesome YouTuber who does just pure guitar repair stuff on his channel. And I'm watching a video on him doing a neck reset, and I'm like, hang on a second. And he's got these two wires down inside the neck and no steam whatsoever, and he pulls the neck off, and I had to learn more about it. So we've taken a left hand turn and we've landed in this new version of the video for you guys. The first thing that you want to do to get started on any neck reset. Um, is to remove the glue underneath the fig fingerboard extension on the guitar. Um, I did this using a heat blanket that I can control with a thermostat to keep it nice and safe. And then I used um, just a piece of spring steel. I do have this little Stumac, uh, I think this is their bridge removal thing. Um, it's very fun. Uh, but you can use any sort of spring steel. Uh, we applied heat to this area and then slowly, slowly we worked all of this out. And you can see obviously my, uh, my, uh, spring steel slides right underneath there, so we're not actually going to do it for you guys. But um, for those of you that are maybe doing this for the first time, you could use um, uh, very, very carefully. You can use a heat gun. Um, Stumac and other manufacturers make these little um, metal blocks that you can heat up once again with a blowtorch or a heat gun, and then you just set it on there until the, the fingerboard extension gets nice and hot, and then you remove it. The next step, once you've removed all of the glue underneath that, is to remove in this particular case, the 15th fret on this guitar. Um, but basically you want to remove the fret that is 
one fret after the body joint. So whether you're doing a 12 fret neck or you're doing a 14 fret neck, it's gonna be the next fret after the body joint. I already did that, so we're not gonna go through the whole process of it, but I am gonna carefully kind of get this fret pulled back out again. Aha. So now what we have, we're gonna set this fret aside because we don't wanna lose it. And what we did after that is I very, very carefully drilled two small holes here. Um, and that was where I was going to inject all of the steam onto this guitar. But thank, thank you to Twidford, we don't have to do that. We're actually gonna use this new tool that I have never used before and I'm really excited to show you guys. We're also is gonna it, see if it works. <laughs> is it pronounced Twidford or T. Woodford? T. Woodford, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you tell us. God, yeah, if he's watching this song. Is it T. Advanced. Woodford? I just always, I don't know. Twidford. Twidford. Oh, okay. I don't know. There's no comma. There's no dash. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Either way, yeah, yeah. If, if he or any of his fans are watching this, sorry. <laughs> but what we're going to do, and this is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's pronounced, it's pronounced uh, D. Riftwood. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, what I ended up buying after kind of seeing his video and me kind of inquiring more, um, there's this website called Hotwire Foam Factory. Hotwire Foam Factory makes this little deal here that I want to say I spent, uh, I think this is 160, 180 bucks. We'll put a link to it in, in the description down here below so you guys can check it out. Um, I wasn't able to find a whole lot of videos online of people using this, but I figured we'd give it a shot. But what it does is it's got a thermostat that we can control here, and then these two, like, uh, lightsaber looking little deals here, but these little things actually get very, very hot. Um, and what I'm gonna be able to do is put these guys down inside the holes that we drilled, um, and then just let these things heat up. Would you look at that? That's so much easier than the steam method. Uh, and, and instead of just it pummeling steam down inside there, I've got this little syringe with some um, some denatured water inside of it, and we're gonna put that down inside the holes. To We, we obviously have to put a little bit of steam down in there. Uh, and then see if we can't get this neck off um, with absolutely minimal amount of water introduction into the guitar, which would be super cool. In addition to using this method here from the Hotwire Foam Factory, these are just kind of like, they're just kind of doing their thing over here. <laughs> <laughs> in order to facilitate in the neck removal process, we're actually gonna put this neck removal jig. Uh, Y'all always give me a hard time for using Stumac products. It's what I prefer, it's what I like. Kiss my butt if you don't like it. Find better products out there if you like them as well. Yeah. Uh, but this is the one that we're using. This thing works absolutely great. This jig actually fits on side on the guitar itself here. Um, just to give you a quick idea, I'll actually fit it here in a second. But it goes on here. Um, as we apply that heat, I'm gonna be able to crank down on this right here, and it's gonna apply pressure on the guitar in this way so that it breaks that seam. If you don't uh, have this jig here, I don't think you're gonna be able to safely remove your neck. So you're gonna need to think about what you're gonna use to apply the pressure to the neck if you don't have one of these jigs. Figure out a way to make something that will do that for you. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do here. I am going, you're, you're gonna see if this works Right here along with us. I don't see why it doesn't, but uh, I'm gonna carefully flip this over. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. There we go. At least like Martin fans are all fairly rational and. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, they never get upset about things that don't matter. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm excited about this guitar. I'm excited about doing it the right way. Um, being honest with everybody at home, I haven't done a neck reset in a very, very long time just because I. I just stopped taking on repairs, but I do enjoy them, and I'm excited to uh, to do this one here. You know, we do all these videos here on our channel of like, you can do it too, and you can do a neck reset yourself. And I'm and I and I want to encourage you to if you have, um, <laughs> if you have the uh, mechanical uh, premonition <laughs> uh, to do this, to do it. It's not it's not rocket surgery, but. If woodworking and tension to detail are not your thing, then this is definitely the kind of job that you would want to take to a professional, um, especially if it's a pre-war Martin like this. I was gonna say, yeah, maybe your first <laughs> shot at it should not be a pre-war Martin. Yeah, <laughs> like if you've got some old beat up guitar, um, totally, totally do it. Or if you have a tailor, um, you're gonna be amazed at how easy a neck reset is. <laughs> but yeah, I just don't want people to get out in front of their skis and for the internet uh, commenters to be like, He's telling people to do neck resets. They're gonna ruin their guitars. Listen, this is uh, not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've kind of got this just ever so lightly, just kind of tacked in place. Um, but you can see that this this uh, this jig does a really good job of offering a lot of protection. We've got these two phenolic bricks here that are pressing right there on the rim of the guitar, which is where you want it to go. 
Um, and this is all cork lined here, and our th all thread that's right here is, is wrapped in rubber as well. So it's it's got a lot going on that will allow for it to not damage the guitar in any way. Um, so yeah, I think that the next step is to just apply a little bit of water and turn these uh, these heating probes on and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna probably put just like a, you know, uh, uh, one milliliter of water in each hole here. And I can do that because I've got a syringe that tells me. The only thing that I'm seeing that I don't really love about this so far is it doesn't have like temperature um, numbers on it. I wish it had like, okay, if you do this, it's gonna take it to, you know, X degrees, but it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna turn this on. I thought I was making noise. <laughs> We're gonna turn this on probably like, you know. Medium high. Yeah, a medium high, a nice, um, you know, we're gonna put a nice sear on it. And we're gonna see what happens. I'm not gonna apply any pressure just yet. We wanna, we wanna let this do its thing first. We'll just see what happens. <laughs> okay, so it's been, I don't know, what, three minutes, four yeah. minutes? Um, we got everything turned on and you can just see here, I just wanted to give you guys a, a little update. It's starting to, Give us a little bit of, oh, look at that, the water's starting to come out. I'm just gonna make sure that that doesn't get out of hand and just kind of be ready to be ready to pull it up. All right, I'm gonna start putting a little bit of heat on this, or I'm a little bit of uh, a little bit of pressure on this, should I say. Under pressure, under. We're just gonna put a little bit of pressure on here. Just to kind of get the ball rolling. So yeah, look, I wanted to give you guys another update. Uh, we've sussed out some things, but we're getting good, good bubblage. And on top of it, it's good color, like this is dark which is what I'm kind of looking for, which tells me we're starting to get a nice heat where we're starting to get the oils out of the wood. Um, and also, more importantly, like Matt was even feeling down here by the heel as I'm feeling some warmth. Uh, it's not hot by any means, but it's nice and warm over here by the heel. I think this is gonna work. Um, I've got some good pressure on it, and I, the trick with this is do not force it. It'll do it on its own. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. <laughs> that worked out really good. So we saw how scary that was. That that popped right off. I'm, I was telling Matt, I've never seen that happen before. But I'm I'm glad that it that it did it on its own. It showed that I didn't really have to torque down on this thing super super hard. So I'm gonna pull this. There it is. Ah, oh, this worked out so much better. Very 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 minimal damage to the soundboard, if any. Um, Looks like there already has been a neck reset once on this guitar, maybe, or no? No, this is the original. Um, but yeah, these shims that are in here, they've got the original serial number on it. So I think these are from um, from the factory, from the 1941 factory uh, installation of this neck. This could be, uh, and we've also got it here, um, the, the original serial number on there as well. Uh, yeah, you can see where, where we drilled through here and it fit right through that gap, and that's the gap that you're aiming for. I know I'm moving all around on the mat, but can you see down in there? When this neck is all the way flush, there's a little gap right there between the two. It's kind of dark, my yeah. exposures, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's about, there's about a millimeter and a half uh, gap that's between those two, and that's where you're trying to either get your, um, your steam injection needle, or in the case of using these little guys here, um, uh, they do. They did the job just as well. Okay, so what we've got is the neck removed, um, and we can begin the next step. The very first step is to just kind of clean up all of this um, nasty hide glue and everything that's sitting on here. And um, while it's still a little warm right now, is the time to do it. Um, it's, it's softened up, and it's going to be easy for us to get in here and clean out. So let me get my chisels, and we'll get to doing that. All right, so I've been taking my chisel, and I got all of the glue removed out of here and the timing has been really good so it got that removed while it was still wet and just as it's kind of come back to room temperature it all hardens back up again because that's the cool thing about high glue and it and it's uh it, it it looks really nice and clean in there but uh and this is pretty typical we do have just a little bit just and we got lucky just this little spot right here you probably can't tell um we took a little bit of the top with us um, it's very minimal. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm taking a razor blade and I'm gonna very carefully try to get this piece removed. Let's see, it's kinda... I'm like being the worst for Matt right now. <laughs> but what we can do now is I can just take some super glue um, and 
Okay, it goes like this. And get this guy glued back on. And the reason why that's important is because we wanna have as much, obviously, flat surface area right here for when we put the neck back on. So I'm just gonna take some super glue and get that glued back on. And then we'll start talking about how to go about um, getting this neck refit at the correct angle um as easily as possible so let me get that part glued on real fast okay so now that we've got all of the glue cleaned out on here i've actually put the guitar body inside this pattern maker's vise because the next and important step is to actually get the angle on this neck um the right way so what we need to do is uh, let's think here yeah what we need to do is take some sandpaper and do what is colloquially known <laughs> as um, flossing. So we're actually gonna take some sandpaper and we're gonna put it in this gap and then we're gonna take this and pull it out so that we can slowly kick this neck angle back ever so slightly until we get it at that spot where the straight edge sits on top of the frets and intersects with the bridge. But because it's a dovetail neck joint, what's going to happen as we lower this back end of the neck into the dovetail joint, I'm obviously exaggerating right here, but we are going to create a gap on the edge of the dovetail joint um, from the male end to the female end, so the dovetail joint's no longer gonna function the way that it should. Um, so we're gonna have to put some shims in here to get it all tight again. But before you start worrying about that, the very first step is to actually kick that neck angle back just a little bit. So we're gonna take some, what I grabbed off the shelf here is 100 grit. Um, a little pro tip for, for those out there maybe attempting this is this is um, the uh, adhesive backed sandpaper that I get in the rolls. Um, I love this stuff for doing um, neck sets because the backside, if you don't pull off the um, the backing material on it, is uh, it's super, I don't know, glidey? What's it? feels good. It feels like a good one. <laughs> <Glide, glide. laughs> uh, but yeah, it doesn't damage the guitar at all, uh, and it slides really nice and easily. So I'm going to slide this thing around. You could say frictionless, I think. Hmm. It's a low cohesion of friction, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to take the 100 grit. Technically, it would be uh, kinetic friction. There's kinetic and static friction. That's what I have to deal with every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, 100 grit to me works really good for this. I could go probably something a little more coarse if I wanted to. Uh, but when you go super coarse, like a 60 grit, um, it, it can actually do little chip outs of the finish. So 100 grit seems to be really good um, for this situation. So yeah, I'm gonna apply pressure, pushing the neck back this way. And just start kinda, I keep track of how many pulls I've done on each side. We'll do five on the treble side. And then we're gonna switch over and I'll do five pulls on the bass side. Ooh, that's a little, a little awkward. <laughs> I'm just gonna come around this way. Do your thing. And then usually I'll need to do at least one here. And then I'm gonna do five again. And we're just, it's gonna take more than five, so I'm not gonna check every single time I, I do a pull. We'll just we'll try to get a little bit more kickback before I start really honing in on it. And you'll notice that as you start to do this, if, if you're actually taking off the correct amount of material, as that neck starts to kick back ever so slightly, this neck joint, like I said, is going to start to get looser. Man, being right-handed makes me have to get in Matt's way. That's all good, dude. <laughs> What's it like knowing you're the inferior hand dominant? That's right. I've mentioned it before on this channel, but I am the only person in this whole house that's right-handed, which is a weird situation to be in. My son, my wife, Matt, and John are all left-handed. <laughs> I think all the left-handers watching this would agree that uh, you're lucky to, to be in a place like that. <laughs> exactly, right? It's still, um, so what's happening, we'll turn it this way. <clears throat> so you guys, I don't know, you probably won't even be able to tell on camera. Yeah, is is this neck is still not wanting to, to push in all the way. There's still a little bit of schmoo there and you can, you can see how I can fit this whole piece of sandpaper in that gap. Obviously I haven't put a clamp on it yet, but we're still got a really tight fit. Um, and then we can also check here on the cheeks. That's what I, you know, most people are gonna to refer to this area here as the cheeks. Um, you can see a little bit of the glue 
here we go there's a little bit of the original glue here and then it goes down to raw wood so this is the part that we're starting to remove with the sandpaper which is what you want I don't want to remove um, material from here to here because then all you're doing then is just shifting the neck further down where we want to be removing mostly wood off the back of the neck so that we can kick that angle back mm. um, so yeah we're just gonna keep uh, keep on keeping on um, not too much more we don't want to go crazy with this um, the more material you remove the more you're gonna have to modify the dovetail to make everything fit and it just starts to um, as we call around here it'll start to Valentine's Day heart on you and next thing you know you're uh, you're chasing your tail. <laughs> All right, I did a couple more pulls with that sandpaper here. We're getting much better seated, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. We're going to set it down. I'm going to make sure that I've got it seated as best I can, and then we're going to take my straight edge, and then we're just going to give it a check here. I'm just trying to not make the neck shift at all. So see how much closer it is over here? I don't know if it's picking up on oh, your yeah. camera. We're not there yet, but uh, we're certainly a lot closer. So what we're gonna do is kind of just keep chipping away. I think it's pretty self-explanatory on this step though, right? We're just keep flossing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to point out, as I like to do, a couple of tips on things that you should be doing to avoid um, some bigger issues. So let me show you that real quick. Um, when you're running your sandpaper for this floss method, when you put it between the neck joint and here, and this works for whether you're building guitars or you're doing neck resets and all that stuff, there's a tendency, I know my hand keeps getting in the way, to just want to pull. And if you pull, you're almost always going to pull up a little bit. And what's going to happen is on this little back section here, it's going to start to curl up. So I always recommend that when you're doing the floss, which I know is different from young kids these days, <laughs> it's that dance, uh, yeah. you want to pull down. Make sure that you're pulling it slightly down so that you don't end up doing that. Um, the other thing is um, down here when you're working on just the tail end of the neck heel, um, you don't want to be coming in here at an angle too much like this because what happens is if you if you pull this like this, you're going to end up with a, a high spot right there. So just on this tail section, um, you want to make sure that you're just pulling in the same direction as the rest of the sandpaper. Um, it takes a little while and it's kind of annoying and tedious, but that's literally what you have to do um otherwise and that's making guitars and that's jazz baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah just because i'm going to do the rest of this kind of the flossing off camera here so that we're not making this video 900 hours long but uh yeah man we're going to keep going with the 100 grit um and just work on getting just this part and then we're going to get into the dovetail joint after this okay so i ended up needing to do about i don't know 10 15 more pulls on each side to get this kicked back the way that i want but what we have now I'm pushing down very hard on the back of the heel here so that we can make sure that we're getting good fitment. Boom. Oh, nice. Right? So we're sitting right where we want to on that. Um, but now what we end up with is, is a neck that just comes off very easily. Um, it's not, it's way tighter than I than I uh, had anticipated, which is a good thing. <laughs> That's what she said. That's exactly what she said. So what we need to do now is um, fit this neck the right way and it's kind of interesting you can see here this is the original and I'm, I'm making an assumption there but I'm 90% sure this is the original shim from 1941 because it's got the serial number written on it in the same way that like the rest of it is um, so this is not like uh, for anybody who may be coming at this as a layman like oh well he's just putting a shim on it that seems kind of like a band-aid but that's that's literally how we go about doing this so what I have done while the camera was off there I went ahead and found some mahogany and took this little bitty and I'm talking about this is probably a tenth of a millimeter thick here made this little shim and what we're gonna do is I'm going to glue that onto I've gone ahead and there we go I'm gonna go ahead and glue that onto here and then what we're gonna be able to then the neck's not going to fit correctly it's gonna be too tight but we're gonna slowly start shaving this down until we get a very good and tight fit on it so I just need to get some some number 20 there you have it folks <laughs> I'm just going to use a little bit of glue on here and uh, and get it on. And then, and then. Okay, so that's pretty much good to go now. We've got our little shim on. Um, and so now what should happen? Yeah. So now what's going on is we can't actually get that all the way down, right? Right. Um, it's all it's all jankified. 
Um, the other thing that it's done is it's pushed the neck this way ever so slightly, and you can see obviously there um, a little bit of a gap. So, but we're gonna take care of all that now. Um, so what we need to do in order to know where we need to take some off is I made a little sanding stick that's specifically for this. Um, it's actually been the old trusty sanding stick we've had forever, but I went ahead and put an angle in on it. And the reason that I've done that is because I need to be able to sand this very nicely, but without affecting any sort of uh, of the geometry that's along the cheek here. So what I can do just to kind of get the, the ball rolling is we're just gonna sand off a little bit just to get a little bit better of a fit. And then we're gonna take some of my son's uh, uh, Crayola chalk, and then we're gonna show you how we go about using that to create witness marks so that we know where we need to sand until this thing fits correctly again. So I'm just gonna take off just a very, very little bit here. It's, we're talking uh, with these neck resets, um, it's like the, the thousandth of an inch uh, here and there is all we're talking about as far as material removal or material addition. You don't want to go too crazy with any any one modification. You want to do a little little adjustments, test for fit, and then a little bit more modification and test for fit. <laughs> Just gonna keep on going. What we're probably gonna end up with is just a little piece that's probably just about paper thin that we can almost see through. You can see here. Um, we're just starting to sand through. Like that's how thin the wood is in that area, which is perfect. Yeah, we're gonna, it's just uh, the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of wood that we're gonna be left with. Um, so yeah, that still needs, you can still see there's a gap. So just keep chipping away at it. Uh, we won't bore you with the entire process here, but yeah, we're just, for now, we're just continuing to hog out some of this material until I get a tighter fit on this. All right, it's been three days. <laughs> uh, I was actually you can see how thin this is right like look at this it's a uh, it's actually sanded through here and here and up at the top here so what we're left with is literally paper thin just the tiniest 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 little bit um, I ended up not even needing to use the chalk but I wanted to take just a second to show you guys how this works uh, this is this, this fun little piece of chalk right yeah. <laughs> um, but the way that you do this actually that's backwards you do chalk on the inside of your guitar. Let's see, hang on. This chalk is not my friend. <laughs> um, you would put your a bunch of either white chalk, or you can even use pencil lead if you want to want to do it that way. Um, and you would want to get it all the way down inside of there. You're gonna slide your neck on. I'm just gonna give it a little tap. A little tap. And there we go. So what you end up with is witness marks to show you where it's hitting. Okay. Um, so you wanted to, so what you would do at that point is I would just either very carefully take my, my sanding stick and just remove a kiss from that spot. I'm using um, 80 grit here. So like it's very little. We still have a bunch of chalk inside of here. So no big deal. Take it, little tap. Little tap, and you can see um, you just keep working it until it gets to exactly where you need it to. Um, and then once you've kind of got as much white on there as possible, all in one spot, that'll let you know that you're getting really good contact along the cheeks of the uh, of the dovetail across the whole uh, the whole length of it, which is gonna you know give you a much more stable joint, give you more area for your glue to attach to, and all of that stuff. Uh, but what we ended up with at this point is the neck angle is right where I want it. Yep, right, just kissing the top of the bridge. Feels good, looks good. Um, I'm gonna, you know, show you guys all in here. Everything looks really good, especially once I were to put some clamps on it. It's gonna go right where it needs to go. Uh, looks good. But what ends up happening, because we've kicked the neck angle back, um, we have... There we go, a little sandpaper. We obviously have a gap here now. 
Um, and sometimes this is an issue and sometimes it's not. If you've only had to kick the neck back just a, a, a very, very little bit, a lot of times you can just get away with gluing this down. But you don't want to have a giant ramp that kicks down here. So what you, we need to do at this point is we're going to take some, this is Brazilian rosewood, and I happen to have some Brazilian rosewood so we can kind of keep this nice and true to the original, but we're gonna, we're gonna basically make another one of those tiny little shims out of a matching material and add it onto here and put the correct angle on it so that it ramps down. It, it was, it's funny because this, the whole time we've been doing this, I'm like, man, it's been so long since I've done a neck reset. It's all, it's all coming back to me now. Um, it, uh, it's, it's nice and, it's fun to do. I just, you know, they take a lot of time. Uh, this one's going pretty quickly so far, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go find me a little scrap piece of Brazilian. Um, I'll show you guys how I go about doing that and glue it on. Um, yeah, let me go find one. Um, so I did get myself some Brazilian rosewood. You can see it's a nice color match. Um, looks really nice there. Uh, it looks janky as all get out, but it actually is perfect. Um, what I've made so far. It's got an ever so. I keep moving around for Matt here. It's got an ever so slight taper from here all the way to the end here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing glued on right now and then get the final um, amount of sanding done on it to get this perfect once it's glued on. Cause the issue that I'm having is figuring out a way to hold this thing while I'm sanding it. Um, I just used the DA sander with some, what did we say Matt? Like a 60 grit? 80. 80 grit, that seemed to do a pretty decent job of getting me like 95% of the way there. Um, but what I'm gonna do now, like I said, is just very lightly glue this thing on place. Um, and then once that's on, then I can go ahead and trim it up to true, and then we can go about getting it angled on here perfect, and then we can glue the neck back on. <laughs> this is non-load bearing, so I don't mind putting a little, little bit of some super glue on here. That sounded terrible, didn't it? It was just, it's yeah. just it was, the veneer was stuck up on it a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure if that'll come through in the final shot or not. <laughs> it sounded but, like I broke but it. But yeah, it did sound pretty bad. <laughs> Super cool. Okay, so now obviously what we've got is, is a little bit of extra wood hanging out over on the side. So I'm gonna get that kind of trimmed down nice and flush. And uh, then we will just get it fit on here and I'll show you how we go about doing that last little bit of sanding and, and checking. Okay, um, got the Brazilian glued on. Let's see, can we, can we, does it even pick up on camera? Can you see it there? I don't know. Honestly. Maybe ever so a slightly. Bit. Down here, you can, you can just see it, obviously. Um, I just test yeah. fitted, it's real dang close. But what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna use my sanding stick that I don't know what, uh, here it is. We're gonna take my sanding stick that I had and, um, it fits really, really nicely over here. That's really, really paper thin. I'm not really gonna mess with that much, but we're just gonna take off a little bit of material here, because it's just a little bit too thick. I'm applying most of the pressure here, not here. We don't wanna round this thing out at all. And it should be about there. Neck resets are like uh, when you need to replace the uh, like the heat exchanger in your car. The job itself, the changing of the heat exchanger is not difficult. <laughs> it's the removing the entire dash to get to it. <laughs> it's uh, that's why uh, somebody. The reason I'm saying that is somebody who's watching this might be like, man, why does a neck reset cost so much? It doesn't seem that hard. It, it technically isn't actually that difficult. Um, it's just removing an entire neck and then all of the potential issues. It's the preventative maintenance you know, somebody who has experience being able to remove all that without damaging the top or, or the, the neck block, you know. So there's just there's just a lot that can go wrong and that's what you're mostly paying for is, is all of that. <laughs> there's guys who do, you know, they do four or five net resets a day, you know, at, at big, big shops. And that's what you're paying for, that experience. So let me show you what this looks like.
little soon. So we got a tiny little gap. So you can see this is all looking really good. A lot of this stuff is just gonna be really hard to see on camera, but there's this tiny, 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 tiny little gap right there um, that I need to sand off some more of the, the material on the, the fingerboard extension just a little bit um, to get that dang near perfect. But uh, so you can just see it there too. Just a tiny little gap. So, and once all this is right, whenever you squeeze this whole thing down, um, the way that the dovetail works, it's going to want to pull the neck down towards the body, the body towards the neck. Everything's just going to go and sit nicely together. Um, if you can get it to fit really nicely dry, once you add some some glue to it, um, the glue acts as a lubricant and lets all this stuff slide even that much better together. Um, it's going to fit really, really nicely. So uh, I'm going to do just a little bit more sanding off camera here and then we'll show you how I go about gluing this neck back on and we can call this job mostly done. Okay, that required a little more sanding than I had hoped. Uh, what I was noticing, uh, and which is probably going to happen to you at home, is once you glue this veneer, I call it a veneer because it's so thin, once you glue this on, what it's going to do is actually raise this up a very, very little bit inside the neck joint, so therefore all of a sudden you don't have all the good contact points that you had with your dovetail. So it's a matter of getting this thinned down so perfectly thin um, near the dovetail that it doesn't change that geometry whatsoever in the neck joint itself. Um, so it took some doing, I'm a little sweaty, but now at this point what we can do is we can actually glue this neck back on. Um, at this point you just want to double quadruple 100 times check, make sure everything looks really good. I never mentioned it in this video, but I do want to right now as one other thing that you should check, especially if you're having to remove a lot, is not only this geometry, but also this left to right geometry. You know, you don't want to accidentally suddenly you, uh, you've got a slight angle on your neck and your strings are falling off the edges of the fretboard. So do pay attention to that if you're doing a lot of stuff. Um, could use hide glue to put this back on. Uh, hide glue is what they used in 1941 to glue this neck on and this is, uh, from what I can tell, like I said, the very first neck reset. But I don't use hide glue. I don't have any even in the shop. Um, I do use this LMI Instrument Maker's glue, which um, the main thing that you're shooting for here is to have disassemblability. Does that feel good? That feels like a good word. I won't challenge it. If this is Scrabble, I'd be like, you know what? You got a triple word off that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and this right here does, I've, you know, all of, this is just what you need to do. I've built many of dovetail guitars early on in my guitar building career. Uh, I always use the LMI glue. It's super strong. It dries very crystal like, and more importantly, it is able to be disassembled so that in the future, hopefully a long time from now, 30 years from now, um, if they decide to do another neck reset, if it needs one, they can do the same method that we did here, or probably, let's be honest, use lasers uh, in 30 years. Who knows? <laughs> There'll be some robot doing all of this. Exactly. <laughs> Chat GTP will just magically fix it all. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so we're going to put some, some wood glue on here, get this thing all clamped in place, and uh, call this a successful repair. Um, uh, this, this client still does obviously need, um, we need to replace the bridge on it, but that's, that's for another day. Um, so for now, hopefully you guys learned a little bit here. Remember, neck resets, um, every single one of them exhibits its own level of complexity. Some of them are going to be super easy if you're lucky and you're doing your very first neck reset you'll have one of these ones that are just like, it just, uh, everything does exactly what you need it to do. It's probably not gonna happen if I'm honest. <laughs> um, and then other ones require quite, quite, quite a bit of work. This one was kind of right in the middle for me, so it didn't, it didn't make me want to pull my hair out too much uh, and left me very happy. Um, one note under glue, do not put glue inside the cheek area here. We just want to make sure that we do it inside on the dovetail itself and on the fingerboard extension. And then we can go about scrape off all the glue as it goes in. Sorry, I got Matt running all over the place. Um, they have these awesome clamps. I actually, I don't, yeah, we'll use this clamp. Sometimes I never know which clamp to use because some clamps exert forces differently than others. But in this particular case, I think we can use this one. It's got nice soft rubber faces on it, so don't worry about the finish. <laughs> Okay, so then we're gonna put one more clamp here on the fingerboard extension, and this bed boy is pretty much locked in place. The nice thing about 
these dovetails is everything does kind of lock into place. The geometry just, everything goes there. So I don't have to like put a bunch of other clamps on it to make sure that the neck's at the perfect angle. It's just gonna do that for me automatically. Uh, we're gonna put a little clamping call inside of here so that we clear the transverse brace. clamping pressure on that one there we go that looks really really nice so we call that a winner winner chicken dinner um, everything looks really nice this will have to sit obviously overnight um, and before I put strings on it obviously I need to replace the bridge on this guitar but uh, yeah that is the very very uh, quick and dirty way to do a neck reset on a guitar um, there are definitely some really great resources on, on YouTube to kind of give you that granular detail on how to do the neck reset, but we just wanted to give you guys kind of just more of a little voyeuristic view into like us doing this cool neck reset on this pre-war Martin. It's just super cool. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if you'd like to see a video where we do the do the bridge on this guitar, the, uh, let us know. Um, if not, I might do it off camera. Who knows? We'll figure that one out. <laughs> but uh, we'll see y'all in the next one. Appreciate it, guys.